Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I create a tea towel inspired by one that I saw in the Crate and Barrel catalog. Now, the Crate and Barrel tea towel has orange pumpkins running up and down the length of it. I create my own version using fabric paint, just on a plain white tea towel. The idea is that it's completely functional, it can be tossed in the wash, and it's completely color fast. And I achieve this by using these beautiful textile paints, and I'll include the link below as well. I'll include the link to the original tea towel, because it is kind of cute, and you might want to purchase one of your own, or you might want to follow along and create your very own tea towel. Now I also have a shorts video where I make a slightly different version, where I carve a stamp and make it into a tea towel. I'll show you that as well, and I do talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. So let's get started. Okay, the first things that you'll need are your tea towel. This is 100% cotton, and I bought it in a package of, I think, a dozen of them, and I laundered it. Now, on the package, it did say it was already washed, but I can tell you that when I washed it and dried it, it changed shape and it became much softer. So it may have been clean, but it certainly had additives to it, probably um, like starches to make it look pristine. So you wanna remove all of those because we're gonna use paint to create our image and you want the paint to stick just to the cotton, not to the additives. And we'll work that out with an iron in a minute. You're also gonna need some freezer paper, which you get from the grocery store, and it comes in a roll like this. Now one side is waxy and one side is just paper. And we'll use this just like quilters use it. On the back here, I have like a little portable ironing board. It's a wool mat, it's pretty thick, and I can iron nicely on it. I also like the feel of it. To make our stencils, I have a little cutting blade here can use an X-Acto knife as well. And then I have a cutting mat. And then to create my images, I'm not using a brush, I'm using just a kitchen sponge that I keep reserved just for painting. And I have textile paint. This is beautiful paint, it's good quality. This bottle is under $10 and it's washable after you heat set it, it's light fast, it's just excellent quality. So I highly recommend this. I know there are additives that you can mix into acrylic paint. Um, I'm not certain as to their longevity, particularly on a useful item like a dish towel, a hand towel that you're probably gonna use to dry your hands and will need to be laundered at some point, as opposed to a slow stitching project, which really doesn't get laundered. So I think if you're gonna go through the trouble of creating this, you wanna invest in quality ingredients. So first thing we need to do is press our dish towel. So because this is a cotton dish towel, I'm using a cotton setting, and I'm just gonna take my time and press out all the wrinkles. You don't wanna add any starch. You can use steam if you want, if that's something you enjoy using. The different dish towels have different quality, so this one already has a run in it. But if I'm gonna use this, or if I'm only hoping it'll last me a season or so, that's fine. If I was giving it as a gift, I'd be far more picky and I'd go through it, make sure it was pristine. As I said, I bought this in a package of 12 and so the quality wasn't fantastic. It was okay. So once you have your towel ironed and the wrinkles removed, you're gonna need your freezer paper. Now I cut two pieces of freezer paper, <clears throat> a narrower sheet that I'm gonna use to create my stencil and I'll set that aside for now, and a larger sheet for my backing. You first need to decide where you wanna put your designs. I tend to fold my dish towels in half, the ones that I use, so this side will be showing. For decorative dish towels, though, I fold them a little differently, where I'll take the towel as a whole and fold it into thirds. And then when I hang it, the center third is showing. So you have to decide how you want the dish towel arranged because that will determine where you're gonna put your stencils. Now the dish towel from Crate and Barrel has the stencils going up and down the length of the dish towel. I think I'm only gonna do the center. I'm gonna do it on the side just because that's the way I tend to use my dish towels. So it'll be on one side here. So that's the side 
that I want to put my freezer paper on and it's the back of my dish towel. I take the freezer paper, set it down, and then I take my iron and I'm just melting that freezer paper onto the dish towel. And the shiny side goes onto the dish towel and I'm ironing the paper side. And this is what quilters do. It helps them with the applique or if they're doing different placements and different techniques. It can be removed very easily by peeling it off when you're done. So it is not permanent. The reason we do this is it stiffens the fabric and it makes it so the fabric is nice and straight and even and it can take paint beautifully. So I just want to make sure that I iron the entire piece so all of the freezer paper is stuck to the area that I know I'm going to put the stencils on. It doesn't take very long, but you just want to make sure you do it thoroughly. Then you want to set it aside to cool. Before we iron on the stencils, on the additional piece of freezer paper, we're going to make the stencils now. So to make the stencils, I'm going to cut them pretty much the length of this piece of freezer paper. And because I want them all to be approximately the same size, I'm going to make a template that I'll make my stencils from. And from there, I'll cut out each one of the pumpkins that I make. You can make the pumpkins as large or as small as you want. I'm going to have mine be pretty large. So I'm just going to sketch out the silhouette of a pumpkin and it's going to be a very loose and very simple silhouette. So it's almost like a figure eight. like this, and then I'll just add a little stem. Now Crate and Barrel's pumpkins have the little ridges cut out, but they're all a little bit different. So here's one example, and so on, and it makes it really cute. I want to just make sure my pumpkins are all the same shape. So I'm going to take my cardboard and cut out that shape of that pumpkin with the stem, and I can even leave the stem attached and just alter the stem on my drawing. So I'm going to take my little knife here and just cut out the pumpkin. So now that I have my pumpkin shape, I'm going to take my scissors and just refine it just so I have all rounded edges. I have a little more control I find with the scissors than I do with the X-Acto knife. But if you're more comfortable with the X-Acto knife, use that So now I'm going to take my strip of freezer paper and now it's time to trace the pumpkins on it. You can decide how many pumpkins you want. Starting at the bottom here, I'll trace my pumpkin. And I'll do maybe two more, leaving a little space in between them. This guarantees me that my pumpkins will be approximately the same size. And now any area that I cut out is going to show up with my paint color. So I'll start at the top here and make a little stem. I'll make a stem on each of these. And I can maybe change it around just so that it's kind of a little arced stem. And now the crate and barrel image had little sections missing and so that's se the sections came out white so that means we're going to cut around the sections so I'm going to make them a little bit thicker than the crate and barrel I still want it to be indicative of a pumpkin and the different sections of the pumpkin so I'm just going to do two sections. And now I want to remove this part and the stem and over here on all of these pumpkins. And you can add as many pumpkins as you'd like. So now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and very carefully cut around So at this point I have my stencil made and these are my masks or the images, the negative images, but I'm not going to use these. I'll set these aside. Now it's time to attach the stencil to my dish towel. So I have my dish towel, the underside, 
where there's one layer of freezer paper. I'm going to flip that over and this is the side of the dish towel that when I fold it to display it will show. And as you can see there's a little bit of contrast here to see where the freezer paper is versus the dish towel. So now I'm going to put my stencil just on top exactly where I want it and I'm going to iron this in place. So I like how that looks. I think I might lower it just a little bit and I'll start in the middle just by pressing that hot iron on the freezer paper and it will attach nicely. And now once I'm happy with that I'm going to let this cool and I'm going to prepare my paint for painting. I have that kitchen sponge and I wet it so it's damp. I'm just taking a paper towel and drying that sponge a little. It'll still be damp but there's no running water, no drips. So now I'm going to take my sponge, dip it in my paint, and then pounce it off. I don't want it globby or unruly because this is only freezer paper and I don't want it to get through the freezer paper. So I'm going to take my sponge and just press up and down all around that little stencil that I made. Come back in, get a little more paint. And you can decide if you want a mottled look or if you want it completely saturated. If you had more colors, you could mix colors. There's a lot of variations you could achieve with this technique. I'm going to continue pouncing until I have the color the way I like it. And again, I'm not smearing it, I'm just pouncing up and down. When that pumpkin is done, just like that. I'm going to move on to the next pumpkin. So I'll do the remaining pumpkins in that same manner. So now I've painted all the pumpkins just with the sponge technique. It's still wet. I'm going to give it about 15 minutes to dry before I remove this freezer paper. The edges may be uneven and we can clean that up with a paintbrush. So we'll set our paint aside and our palette and just wait. We'll come back in 15 minutes and see where we're at. So now it's been about 15 minutes. It's not dry, it's not even dry to the touch, but it's not wet anymore, it's not so goopy. So now I'm just gonna start at the top and gently peel off the freezer paper and we'll see what type of fine lines we get, what type of edges. I'll come back up from the bottom. And here's the freezer paper. Can't really get another use out of that. And here is the actual piece we were working on. Now when I pulled it up, some of it came up from the back of the freezer paper. And so that's why it's a little uneven, but it looks pretty good to me. I can go in there and fine tune it with a brush just to really sharpen the edges and to make this more like a pumpkin. So to do that, I'll just get my little brush out and fine tune the edges. So at this point, I'm just sharpening any edges, rounding any corners, filling in any spots that remain on the pumpkins that I want to look more orange, just like in the crate and barrel dish towel. After I've done that and completed all my little spots that I want to paint, I'll let this completely dry and then we'll heat set it. So now I have it set on my ironing mat and it's ready to be ironed again. The pumpkins themselves are a little rough. You can feel a little bit of texture here from the paint, but it's not sticky or anything. I'll cover everything now with my parchment paper again, and now I'm going to heat set it with the iron. So to heat set it, I'm going to press my iron over each pumpkin, holding it there for 30 seconds. I don't have to press down hard because the weight of the iron will do that for me. I just want to make sure all the areas that are painted are really set. So now the parchment paper removes easily from the pumpkins, but I'm going to set it back on the pumpkins when I flip it over. And this way, if anything presses, any of the fabric paint presses, it protects my mat. Nothing should come off onto the parchment paper, but I like to just be certain. And now I'm just going to press right through the freezer paper. 
I like to do that once again, just to really set that paint. And then I can remove that freezer paper. You can see how the paint bled through the fabric. From here, I'm gonna take some of that parchment paper, I'm just folding it in half, and I'm gonna heat set it once again. I just don't think you can go wrong with heat setting it repeatedly or too long. I'm really trying to make sure that that paint adheres to that fabric. So I'll make sure each one of the pumpkins is set for 30 seconds and then it should be all ready to go. And so this is the unveiling with all the freezer paper that's gone, no more parchment. And this is how my pumpkin dish towel looks. I fold it in half just like I would do in my kitchen and now it's ready to be used. I don't have to wash it ahead of time, although you certainly can if you, that's important to you, but now it's ready to be hung in my kitchen. Now let me show you my other version that I showed in the shorts where I carved a stamp and made the pumpkin. It's a little closer to what the crate and barrel tea towel looks like because of the placement and the size of the pumpkins, but I did this from carving this stamp and I'll include a link for that material that you can carve as well. So these are my two versions of that crate and barrel dish towel. I have the one that I painted and I have the other one made with a stamp. I tried to capture elements on the crate and barrel dish towel that I really liked. I like the roundedness, the implication of the sections of the pumpkin. Which one do you like? So that's how I create my crate and barrel inspired tea towel. I just think it's so cute. The bright orange, the shapes, perfect for fall. And I love that it's machine washable. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And thanks for joining me today.